Welcome back to Yes, Pero No, episode number eight. Yeah, parece mentira, pero yeah, yeah, we made it to number eight. Yes, we had technical difficulties yeah. last week. We had recorded a whole show, and then when editing came around, for some reason, our audio was just trash. Horrible. Un ruido. Anyway. I don't know what happened. Yeah. I don't know what happened. And honestly, I'll be honest with you guys, it bummed me out because we're getting used to it. We're really loving doing the show for you guys. And it was funny. And uh, we had the kids here. It was like a whole production thing. And we had a great day that day. But when it got to editing, the sound was just trash and it couldn't be used. So this um, episode is going to be coming out now next week after Easter. Yeah. But right now we're recording it um, a little bit before and today's actually Good Friday for us. So you guys will be watching us after Easter. Okay, so también vamos a estar uh, testing each other to see how well we know about our past, about our relationship, about many other things. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we're going to do like a little game, you know, where we're going to ask each other questions and let's see just how well we know each other. We know what uh, the mm -hmm. other thinks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. So stick yeah. around for that. Hopefully uh, this doesn't set our relationship on fire. <laughs> it can't be worse than the last 25 years. We, we've survived. I think we'll survive this too. I think we will. What we're going to do, let's grab some papers. Actually, we okay. have some folded papers here, here. I'll give you half of them. Thank you. So what we're going to do is I'll ask the questions mm -hmm. and then we are going to write down the answer. And then so that way we can't lie and say that, yes, that we were thinking what the other person said, because we could be a little sneaky. So let's go ahead and ask the first question and then we'll write down our answer and then we'll compare and see what we think. Okay, okay? let's do this. The very first question is, what is your favorite memory together? That's a hard one. Let me think. That is a hard one. Yeah, that's a really rough one. We had a lot of great memories together. So to pinpoint one out of all okay, of those. Okay, let's do this. How about in the last year? Let's pinpoint it down to the last year. What was your favorite memory together? <laughs> <laughs> You're still thinking. So I, I don't think Oh, this... I could think of one. I could think of one. I don't know if it was my most favorite, but it was it was really sweet and I loved it. Okay. I, I think I can, I think I got one too. Okay, all right, okay. let's do it. I don't know what he's doing. Okay, you go. You go first. Okay. No, no, no. You go first. Come on. No, ladies first. Oh, okay. You got to go right, first. All right, so what is your favorite memory together? We have talked about this on the show, but mm. basically what I put is the memory of the baby ducks being born and Joe and I... Don't tell me you wrote the same thing. I did. No! I did. I can't... So I put the memory of the baby ducks being born and Joe and I half asleep enjoying their birth and the kids coming to see them. What did you write exactly? Well, I wrote the day you woke me up at 3 a.m. to let me know that the baby duck was born and then I went back to sleep. <laughs> Jitty was snoring while the other one was being born. Yeah. I cannot believe you got that. Vite. Yeah. We're Woo! Good. Okay. All Next. right. Let's, let's go. Second one. What we is, are in sync. We are. We are in sync. It, right. it seems like we're not, but we are. Yeah, we are. Okay, so what is one thing that you appreciate about your partner? One thing. Only one. No, you can write more than one if you want. Remember, it's going to be different because I'm going to be saying it about you and you're going to be saying it about me. Right. One thing I appreciate about my partner. You can kind of combine it. And supersize it. Cada vez que hablo de eso me entra hambre. We're like writing a, a newspaper here. Okay, I got it. Okay. Okay, so the question is, what is the one thing you appreciate about your partner? What I appreciate the most is that you try to please me and do things that you may not like that much or you may not like at all just to make me happy. And I, I appreciate that. Aww. What about you? Okay, what I wrote about you is that you're always supporting my dreams. Anything that I want to do, he is the most supportive husband in the world. And he's very caring, especially when I'm not feeling well. Like he is like my doctor, my nurse, the one that comforts me and <laughs> silly. And, and honestly, this year has been very challenging for me. There's a lot of changes going on in my body. Like sometimes I just feel like crapola. 
I'm honest, going through hell. Yeah, it's been hard. And, you know, just trying to find my new normal. And Joe has been there every step of the way and just loving me through it. I can't ask for more. Right? So, yeah. thank you. I, you know, I, I can help. I'm just perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next one. Ooh, where do you see us in five years? In cinco años. In cinco años, boy. Uh, okay, let me see. Five years. Um, that's a, that's a, I don't think it's that hard for me. No? No. Okay. It's time to write. Okay. I've got it. Okay. Go you first? go first. Okay. So where do we see us in five years? So mm -hmm. honestly, I see us exactly where we are right now because we are very happy. I love my home. I love the city that we live in. I love the fact that most of our kids are close by. But I do see that in five years, all the kids are going to be living that much closer because I have one that's far. For some reason, I feel that I hope. I really hope so, so that all my, my grandbabies are close. Um, and also the podcast being super successful with all of your help and success. But I do say that. I mean, we're still really young. Right. I see us healthy, probably more fit. I wouldn't change much. I'm happy where I'm at. Okay. Well, I wrote uh, traveling with the family. Oh, nice. Especially going to Europe. Okay. Like uh, to France. Yes. I see myself drinking a glass of wine there and, and sharing it with and my And Italy. I want to go to Italy, homie. too. Yes. Uh, raising more animals okay. in the farm. Okay. You know, I would like to have my horse and stuff like that. Uh, I don't know. Many other things that we can do together as a family. I would love that. Okay. I like it. Yeah? Yes. We're good? Yes, we're good. Thank you. If you could have any superpower, what would it be and why? <laughs> oh, I got it. Meaning me, right? I mean, each one of us. Right. I'll write mine. Oh, and I write mine. Okay. Or do you want to write about me and I write about you? No, no, I'll write about me. And then I write about you. <laughs> okay. About you is what I kind of... I'll say... I don't know. You have everything. I think I got one. And you start first. Okay, I put that I would have the superpower to heal people on command. Although I do believe in healing and supernatural healing, but I would like immediately that superpower of I'd heal. I'd heal the sick. That's what I would want to do. So that would be really cool. Okay. And what I thought about you is that you would like to, well, you like that too, but that you'd like to fly. See. Si. Because you like flying and jumping out of planes and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. So what I wrote about myself is I would love to have the power of healing. Oh, there you go. Because I do care about people. Yes. And uh, not only healing people, but also healing animals. And animals, yeah. yes. And number two, if you had this power, I think you would, you would definitely use it. Be happy all the time. Yes. I would love that. And it's so hard because it's hard, life is about... Up and down. And that's how we value, you know? Of course. But it would be nice. Yes. To, I be, to be happy all the time. Or at least 90% of the time. Yes. That would be really I cool. I think everybody would like that. That's true. Let's okay, go. I Next like one. it. Okay, what is your favorite thing to do on a lazy Sunday? Okay. I know yours. We actually, well, we'll talk about it now. Okay, so now I'm, I'm the, I'll start first. Mm -hmm. My first choice would be... <laughs> doing a barbecue with a family. I would have never thought about that. I, I never. enjoy that incredibly. But when I'm not able to do a barbecue... But a Sunday. I love to be in the woods. I like to be in nature. I like to walk, you know, near the, 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 the creek of, of the... Uh, here at the farm. And in your case, we'll be watching TV, being uh, with your covers, así, arropadita, the AC, extremely cold, yeah. and just snacking and looking at your phone and just relaxing. I do enjoy that. What I wrote was my favorite thing to do on a lazy Sunday. I love, I know Joe, I put barbecue for Joe. And for me, I put cuddle with the grandbabies. I love to cuddle with them, watching TV or whatever, and enjoy a good home-cooked meal with the family. Okay. I love that. We're Come pretty on, good. We're Come pretty good. We're close. We're pretty good. All right. Okay, let's see what else. What else? What traffic sign best describes your spouse 
on a bad day. Sí, pero how many traffic signs are there? Okay. There's, I, I, there's a traffic light and there's a stop sign. No, no, okay, okay, there's okay. There's a yield don't, don't, and that's it. There's no... No, there's other ones. Dale, really? or inventa uno. Okay. <laughs> eh. Okay, I got it. Yo voy a empezar. Okay. It will be... Detour. <laughs> Detour? Ay, Dios mío. <laughs> El tuyo, I put proceed with caution, could be one. And the other one says, don't uh -huh. drive off a cliff. <laughs> okay. Nice. Okay, I like all that. All right, all right. Okay, okay. Bien, bueno. okay next one. Ese me gusta. Okay, next one. Who hogs the covers? Okay, I'm going to go first. Okay, I Obvio. usually I usually hog the covers because here's the thing. Here's the thing. I need to get like a California king mm -hmm. um, cover. Because the one that we have is just king, and I love king size beds. I've had king size beds for years. Right. But the thing is that the cover's not like wide enough. I don't like it just to lay over me. I like it to like hug my body. You know what I'm saying? And so when I put it here and I kind of put it here and I tuck it, it's pulling off of him. So he has to get extra blankets to cover himself. But I must say that the other day I stayed up late and of course he goes to sleep earlier because of his schedule. He gets up in the middle of the night practically to uh, do his morning show in Atlanta. And when I got to bed, it must have been like 11 o'clock at night, I get there and he está envuelto like un tamal, right? He's like, like a hot dog bun and he's got all of the blanket. So it's like the left side, which should be mine. I'm on the left. He's got it on him. And then the right side was dangling over the bed on the floor. And I was like, I felt so bad if I would have pulled the blanket. Well, I'm so me. used to being uncovered. Que, que parece que my body started pulling and pulling and pulling. <laughs> y veo que no había no resistance. No, so I kept pulling. You kept pulling and pulling and pulling. I guess that's what it was. So I ended but up... Let's talk about the wait, sleeping. But, but, let's let's but, talk but about the I sleeping. I have to take a port uh, this opportunity to... Talk about a, a little situation que pasa durmiendo. Okay, pero espérate, pero I had to get another blanket mm. and cover myself. Okay. And yo lo dejé ahí envuelto como un tamal. Yes, thank you. Okay, going to what I was going to say. When I go to bed, right, I am the kind of person that I like to be still. Not to be moving around too much until I actually fall asleep. There's moments where I twist and turn and you know do my little movement here and there but not much but i my body tends to uh produce a lot of heat and her body i guess doesn't produce that much heat because ella viene in the middle of the night right when i'm like yeah there you know you know what i'm talking about right you're you're like te estás entregando completely and all of a sudden ella es así con la pata qué pata qué feo qué vulgar close, close really close to me And that, eso, esas patas están frías. <laughs> like super, super cold. Because you're so warm and, and then yummy. Ella me toca con la pata esa. And I just, you know, wake up. She wakes me up. I say, ¿a quién, quién quiere que le pongan algo frío? I en need el cuerpo? warmth on my feet. I totally understand, my love. I'm I wearing love you. socks. You know how much now. I love you. I am wearing socks to keep because the thing is, but it doesn't I hurt. matter. And then the other problem <sighs> is that she wakes me up, me deja. El muslo de su pierna, okay? Close to my body, and then my other guy gets activated. Joe! It's true. Joe, this is a family show. But I'm not, what am I, what I'm saying, the other guy gets activated, the guy that wants to party all night <laughs> instead of going to sleep. Entonces, that creates a big problem. Porque entonces, me paso toda la noche así como que... And ¿Y then, qué? ¿Y qué? ¿Y tú qué? Where's the party? Ya there is a, no party. El tropicama, ¿ok? And then, of course, there's not going to be any party. Because no. if, if I do party, then I cannot wake up, you know, at, a, at 3.30 in the morning. Yeah, ain't going to happen. So, moving on. All righty. Okay. Next question. Ready? <laughs> okay. You're shipwrecked on a deserted island. Oh, here we go. No me hablas de island, que con todos los problemas que hay ahora mismo en las noticias. No, de, no, no, no. Olvídate de, de esa isla. isla. esa de Einstein y todo eso. No, no me, es you know Einstein, what, which island? es Epstein. Ay, Dios mío. Bueno, ese mismo. Yo no, I don't understand much about Okay, Fandra. no. Con It's not that island. Ferrero, concentrate. I, I don't want to be in that island. Concentrate. So go, go to the next no. one. No, you're shipwrecked on a deserted island. This okay. one is deserted. Okay. Nobody freaky is there, okay? Okay. Who eats who to survive? <laughs> That's not nice. <laughs> okay, we're going to skip that one. We'll guess skip guess it. who's going to die. No, first of all, I am not going to eat you. <laughs> que no? 
I am <laughs> Cristina, con el apetito que tú tienes. No, I'm not. I'm actually yeah. on a diet that I have. I, I can't will, eat how I was you eating. You will hit me with a rock in my head. <laughs> On the second day. <laughs> and be, and be me eating ask, you mira, like, a, like a chicken wing. Me, me, you will roast me. You will roast me in the middle of the island. Pobrecito Joe. Have, okay, we're not going to even write down that answer. Sí, no, no, no. Go to the next one. <laughs> Who is the most likely to take over the planet as an evil genius? De los dos. Sí. You. <laughs> Joe, we're not even writing it down. Pero es que, what, what am I going to write it for? I mean, like... <laughs> Don't you see it? <laughs> They see it. You can clearly see it. <laughs> They do see it. I see it. <laughs> How would your spouse react to a flying cockroach? You? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, well, here's the That's thing. how you react. It's true. Tú ves una, un, a little spider in a corner y empiezan los gritos en... en no, yo no grito, like, pero empiezo, Joe. Yeah, but Joe. You, have, you have screamed before. Porque una vez le tiraste un zapato <laughs> and then the, the, la arañita just fell down on the floor Ooh, me and then you started like, like I don't like screaming. I don't like insects. I don't... And sí, I definitely no don't tanto. like flying cockroaches. Like those palmetto bugs. Miami has some nasty... Palmetto bugs, these cockroaches yeah. that just fly around. They are gross. They're chunky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know how you feel about them. I don't like it. Okay? okay. So I definitely freak out over that. And he, okay. and you are very brave. I have some of my some of my kids are very are very scared of insects. So but thank God that you you're very brave. Okay, this is a good one. Who would survive longer in a zombie apocalypse and why? Wait, I don't have to write it down. Okay. We're not even writing down at this point. Definitely you. Because he is a sniper. He's a very sharp shooter. Eso no se dice. <laughs> He's a good shot. Oh, oh, he is a good shot. Nah. Um, I think I'm pretty good too. I don't like um, shooting and that kind of stuff. But when I do it, I've been pretty good. But definitely him, he, he'll win. I think it has to do with uh, getting prepared. It's not about the shooting. It's more about you being prepared for that kind of, of event. And uh, you do very well in, uh, in emergencies. And I That's think true. that th I think that you definitely will survive. The problem that we are going to have is when it comes down to certain things que son un poquito dificultosa. Por ejemplo, el hambre. You're right. terrible with hunger. You are worse than me when you're hungry. You get... You, That's not true. Ferrero. That's not true. He doesn't even believe it himself. He doesn't like it. He gets hangry, hangry, hangry. But everybody does, really. But he really gets hangry. Okay. Would your spouse say you have a better sense of humor, sense of time, sense of adventure, or common sense? What about if you're missing all of these? Don't say that. No, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. What did you say? I will I say to... you have a good sense of humor and also you have a good sense of adventure. I was going to say the same. Look, sense of humor and adventure. Yeah. Have you? Well, we definitely have laughed at so many things that have happened to us. There's not many things in our lives, even when they have been terrible, that we probably haven't laughed at at one point or the other. No, but we, we, we have to. We have shared, you know, decisions of moving to other places not knowing what's gonna what's gonna happen yeah so that's and, definitely and a sense of adventure that, that's something that we we both have shared yes and it's been fantastic and this I last think adventure coming great. to georgia I, I was like that. fantastic i like that. i love it we moved to uh it was exciting to california was also you know was a sense of you know adventure to see que otras cosas podíamos explorar and yeah. i wouldn't mind one day just you know pick up and like i said move ourselves to to otro otro continente even. i don't know I hope that I don't have Temporarily, to. I mean, it's Well, great. just to travel. I love to travel, yeah. but to actually move, I despise moving. I hate putting my belongings into a box and leaving the comfort of my home. I just don't like it. I don't think if, it, if I am able to choose, I will not move again. If we actually go deeper into that question, I could say that you are a very bright and intelligent woman. <gasps> It, it will be a lot easier for you to learn any kind of, of, you know, of trade or whatever than me. Because I am the kind of person that I learn by seeing things. Mm -hmm. And I have a high level of common sense, but also a high level of 
invention. Mm-hmm. And that's what saves me. Sometimes I don't know about something, but I can I can build it. I can make it up. Well, usually you know, when we're going to build it's, it's, something, it's, something weird. it's, it's just, funny uh, because amongst the kids and everything, it's usually they'll just hand me the booklet of the instructions and I'm the one telling them, okay, you need to get this and you need to put this because it's more yeah. of that common sense, that, that kind of thing. And they... Well, Joe is definitely able to fix absolutely anything. And so he has that creativity that helps him. Well, I see I see the world and some people say, oh, I think that you are at some level, some, you know, autistic because I see definitely the world in a very different way Mm -hmm. than a lot of people. Than a lot of people. Yeah. And the way that I interpret sometimes situations that I've been in is not the same as as other people. Mm -hmm. You know, that has caused me some kind of, uh, I would say, some conflicts in my life. Mm -hmm. Because of that, for people not understanding the way that I see it, and for me, not understanding it, how they see it. Yes. Okay, do we have anything else? Let's see. Uh, oh, this is kind of cool. Okay, what piece of clothing of theirs do you hate the most? Oh, that's a hard one. That I hate the most. I don't think I hate any of your pieces of clothing. You're Even your hope. t-shirts with holes and stuff. I, I wash them for him because he likes to sleep in them. They're most comfortable. Yeah. That one, no doubt. No, I don't have anything. What's their weirdest habit? Oh, oh. <laughs> you know mine. I just don't know yours. Your weirdest habit? What do you think I'm going to say? The Q-tips. <laughs> like using Q-tips a lot, <laughs> most of the time. Which is terrible for your ears, but you know, we got to clean our ears. Yeah, I feel a sense of relief when I have a Q-tip <laughs> in my ear. I really do. I just... Yeah, maybe kind of weird. Maybe I should go to <laughs> maybe Q-tip, we should Q-tip Anonymous. We should not talk about this. I just hit the mic. What is the first movie you saw together? <laughs> the first movie we saw together? Oh, my God. ¿Qué pusiste? Armageddon. Armageddon. We were watching Armageddon, and, you know, we were behaving ourselves very, very, very well. But it came to a point where, you know, that part where the rocket just (laughs) takes off, you know, just read between the lines what happened. We never finished watching Armageddon again. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> so that was fun. I enjoyed that. Um, I really liked those questions. That was funny. You know, something interesting happened to me the other day. I was contacted by a friend. She is in a relationship and she was asking me, you know, like for advice on how to fix things because she had been with someone for a while and then they decided to separate because she felt like you know he wasn't really taking things seriously as to kind of take action to build their future and she was like you know I need to have somebody that's ready to settle down etc etc so she broke things off with him she actually went out with a couple of guys the only thing was she continued to speak to her ex on the phone that gave her ex an idea or basically a message of that they're still talking to each other. Yeah, a sense of hope. A sense of hope and staying true to each other. Meanwhile, he did not know that she was dating a couple of people. She started with one and then with the other and then finally broke things off and they decided to come back together. Lo and behold, and this is a far away relationship, okay? They live in different states. He comes to visit and he stays over and actually finds her iPad and is kind of doing whatever. And you know that thing where your phone kind of syncs with your iPad and he found some messages there Hmm. that he knew nothing about and everything exploded. I really tried to help her. I tried to intervene and kind of give my best advice. Ponerle anestesia. Ponerle anestesia. But here's the thing. When you swear to someone that you have not been with anybody else and that person just finds the receipts right there in front of them, it's very difficult to build that trust again. When the trust is broken, it's almost like it's over. It's over. And no matter how that person tries to fix it and explain why and the whole thing no matter what happens moving forward they're going to think well is what they're telling me the truth or not honestly i think that trust 
is probably one of the most important things in a relationship. In any relationship. In any relationship. Yeah. With a friend, you know, with a spouse, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, whatever the situation is. A friend. Uh, también es importante tener a esa co-worker. Relación. It doesn't co-worker. matter. Once trust is broken, you are going to doubt that person for the rest of, of your life. Even if you decide to stay with that person. Do you agree with that? or? I don't agree with that. Okay. I don't agree what? because remember that every situation leads up to an outcome based on, on many variants within that relationship. Okay. El mundo de una relación, it's a very complex world. Imagine yourself in that situation, right? right? You and I break up and we are dating. From that moment, we don't stop talking to each other, but we're not dating anymore. Right. It's like we care about each other, so we want to continue in contact. I start going out with somebody, and I'm actually intimate with that person, and then I realize that guy's a deadbeat, and I don't want to be with that person, and then I meet somebody else, and I realize I have nothing in common with this person. I break up with that person, and then I'm like, I really miss Joe, and I want to be with him. So I'm going to go back with you, right? But I'm not going to tell you about all this other nonsense because I feel like it's going to hurt your feelings. You know, that's one of those things I don't like to talk about other relationships, but the whole time, although you try to stop thinking about me, you just couldn't, right? Mm -hmm. And you thought that I felt the same way and I didn't see anybody. You didn't really see anybody. Then we get back together and then you find my iPad and you see messages from another guy to me. There are crappy relationships in between But I lied to your face. You actually asked me, did you go out with anybody else? And I looked in your eyes and I said, I swear, I didn't go out with anybody else. And then you find out that I did. Well, if the person really loves the other person, no no se lo debe decir. But you found out. I didn't tell you and you found out. Well, then that's a different story. That's the problem. But, but, like we mentioned before in the other podcast about the relationship, when you start dating a person, esta es la misma situación, and you start dwelling into their past. Yes. Espérate, y con quien han estado, y lo que han hecho, and all of the above, that creates a really bad taste. It does. Ella te empieza a contar, sí, yo he tenido otras relaciones, you know, I went out with this guy, with that other guy and they happen to be in in your circle of friends and you're like okay so now you feel like como una tercera rueda you know and I'm like I'm like a filler like oh I came into your life now because maybe because I the am- other two didn't even no I am your last resort you're my last resort which is what this person felt like and I heard him say it and I was like oh my god there is no fixing this this if, is if, so messed up if you up. really love that person you don't question about the absent time you move on and let it be but now I Do you hear our rooster outside of our window? <laughs> but if, if you don't really care about the person... But they do. They care about each other. And then, I saw it crumble. And they are both so upset. What do you feel is one of the most important things to have in a relationship? Like, what is the thing that can really break a relationship for you? Number one, I think that men have a high expectancy... Uh, on a relationship that sometimes is not realistic. Some of the men marry a woman and they think that they're going to mold her or change her to what they think she should be. Mm. And that is the biggest mistake you can do. Um, For me, I think that one thing that can really kill a woman's love for a man is probably feeling like that man doesn't give you the place that you deserve in their life. You know, uh, men that have like mom type of issues that they put their mother first before their wife. You know, I think that you have to love and honor your parents. I believe in that. But first and foremost, you leave your parents to become one with your partner. Now, let me ask you one thing. Yeah, yeah, everything gets really complicated because you asked me about the point of view of a man. Yes. How men see the breaking point of a marriage. Do you believe, this is, a, this is a very tough question, okay? Oh boy, here it comes. Do you believe that you can love more than one person in the same level? The same amount of love? Yeah. Like you say, you met a guy. Yes. You fell in love with that person. And then within that period of time, you met another guy. Tú te sientes igual por esas dos personas. I'll tell you something. I cannot. In the same level at the same time. Listen, I was a single mom 
for about five years. I dated mm. in that time because I got married very, very young and I was married for a while, like eight years. And so I really hadn't dated at all. So once I got divorced from my first husband, I needed to date and really get to know what I liked, what I didn't like. I kind of lost myself in those in that marriage, really. And so I went out with various people, not all of them serious or anything. <laughs> But I would never go out with two guys at the same time. Like in that same period of time, I personally could not do it. I know a lot of people that do. I find that a lot of people get themselves into trouble doing that. I saw my brothers. Era muy mujeriego. You know, they had a lot of girls all the time. And the calls to the house and I had to cover for them. I hated doing that. So I never did that. And also I saw a lot of stuff, you know, with my mom and my dad. So I didn't want that for myself. So I just went out with one person and maybe it would last 30 days or two weeks. I'd break it off and I could start the very next day with somebody else. But it was never during the same time. That's me. Right. I know a lot of people that do. I personally don't have the capability of doing that. But I think that there is reason. there is a possibility. I don't know. Of, of, yeah. no, not the same because amount of love. Example, you can lie to people. There, there's, there's people that they practice other kind of beliefs. Uh, religions where is allowed to have more than one wife and I have met these people it's not you know I'm not talking así de mm -hmm. inventado and these people honestly have shared with me that they were in love with the wives that they have they love them all in different ways in different ways I bet you he wasn't Cuban bueno he would be Porque dead right si, now if he, if he would be dead <laughs> si fuera una cubana are yeah. you crazy Tener yeah. más de una mujer, but, more than one mo woman, but more at the than same one time, woman in your marriage. What are you crazy? I kill you. Fíjate, at the same time, no, 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 no. I understand the the principle behind it, even though I do not support that. But I do understand the principle behind it because I see the way that I love you. Yes. I see the way that I love my daughter. Yes. I see the way that I love my son. I see the way that I love a. a my friends, tú sabes, it's different kinds of love different levels of love there is people that you're willing to give your life for i will not give my life for everybody but bueno casi casi yeah but when you get into that situation of having more than one spouse it gets no, so messy que estar loco. there so, is so much jealousy and competition bueno, among them even in some of these I you know the religions or in the different cultures where that I is guess. used And it is said that that man has to sit, have the same kind of house for this wife that they do for this wife, you know, the same amount of kids and give the same amount of time. It is so messy. Eso es un desastre as far as I see. So in my opinion, no, you cannot love two people unless it's something that I guess it's a culture that you're born into. I don't know. I don't agree I, with I, that. I think it is possible. It's just that. You know, it will not be acceptable in my world of, of thinking. But at the same time, like I said, you know, I think that it is possible to love more than one person. You live in a way sometimes where you love in different stages of your life. Yes. And then you, you love in different ways in those stages of your life. For example, when you're young, logicamente the hormones take over. Mm -hmm. So as a man, we look more for the physical part of a relationship yes we're looking for that girl que tiene tremendo cuerpo that is you know beautiful you know it's, it's the top of the line material like we call it right top of the line okay but as you get older some men mature and you know that some, some don't some but never some mature siguen en la misma bobería y en la misma bobería and they don't get out of that they don't they don't they don't mature As, as a man and all those things you have to take in consideration when you have to do with uh, have to do with marriage Now, you ask me, what are the breaking points for a man for you to get to that level of either irte de tu casa y hacer lo que no tienes que hacer, mm -hmm. or, you know, get to the point where you want to separate or get divorced from your partner? I'll say that the number one, it's when they stop caring, you know, caring for for the things that you do, caring for... The wife stops caring about the man's things. Right, oh, okay. for the things that, that... Giving you priority and caring the what things you need, that, your that, needs. The things that they are valuable for me. Right. Uh, the things that they, they make me happy. They stop sharing time with you. You're not the priority on their list. The kids could be their priority. 
You know, I don't have a problem with that. Never had. But when I'm not number two, when they are number one, then we have a problem. Yeah. You feel not loved. As a man. Yeah. That's how I feel. Yeah, I feel like sure. I'm rejected. Number yeah. two, cuando, you know, when I met you, you know, and you were like so caring about the way that you look, about your body, you know, being sexy, and you stop doing that, then that's that's a sure way to, to you know, to pave your, your way to a separation or a divorce. Why? Because... Just stop taking care of yourself, you mean? Yeah. The, the, men like for his wife to be beautiful. The, the dress is nice for him. That is sexy. That is from the men men's point of view. Mm -hmm. What about a woman? No, yeah. I mean, for me, like I said... For the man not to give me my place in the sense of giving, like, caring what I have to say or um, making sure that I am respected, you know, in uh, in the family and in his family as well. It makes me feel like I'm not cared about, you know. So I totally just start disconnecting or feeling like that person is not giving me, you know, that care when I'm feeling sick. I've experienced that. And it's very sad to feel sick and saying, I have to call my mom or I have to call my sister because my spouse doesn't even care. That is very sad. So that sense of being my partner's priority continues to make me fall in love with him. That's how I feel. Because the thing is, the man I always feel like your priority. Que, que the same way that I am going to one day gain weight or... or yeah. Or lose weight or, or wrinkle, to say I won't be as attractive as when I was young. But you know what? It's not but all for about men, that. Yeah, but for, for men, the, it's, it's different. It's not all about that. El hombre, I think, into the last stages of his life, continues to see that as a very important factor in a relationship, while it should not be. They don't see themselves in the mirror. You know They're saying? balding. And They're getting older. La barriguita you know? de cerveza. Yeah, all, all, all of those that things. stuff. So in, in part of life is just Reality. having that um, depth in a relationship where you know that midway for women, they gain weight. There's different things that are happening as changes come to your life. And for men as well. You know, you start getting that little belly. Um, your muscle tone is not the same. Mm -hmm. And there has to be a depth to the relationship where you see past those things and yeah you see them but you know their presence um their voice and just knowing that they are there means so much more that you fall even more in love with that person to the point where you feel like i don't want to live without this person i can't live without this person it doesn't matter that they don't look like how they look like when they were 25 years old so this happens to everyone and nobody is exempt from that happening mm -hmm. years are going to come the wrinkles are going to come the gray hair are going to come and your body is going to change and you don't know if sickness is going to reach your life disease is going to reach your life what the situation is going to be like and love can transcend through all of that You know, to where you see yourself on the other side, you know, you can be healed from a disease or whatever the situation is, and you come out stronger as a relationship, you know, as a couple. So I think all of that really is just surface stuff that if you really get down into it and you realize, you know, what's really important in a relationship, all of that stuff kind of is second or third or fourth. And you realize that when things get tough, who's the one that's there with you? You know, who's the one that is supporting you through your dreams and the different projects that you've wanted to do? Who has been there when you've lost somebody that you really care about? Those are the things that give that depth and that meaning to a relationship. Man for men, You cannot forget to treat your wife the same way that you used to treat her when you guys were dating. You know, open the door for her, you know, say good morning, bring her a flower, you know, take her out, you know, on a romantic dinner. Try to be as close as you can. It will not be the same because you your level of, vamos a decir, de confianza has built through the years on the... You know, something that you would have never, you know, done in front of her when she was your girlfriend, you do it now. Porque no te importa. <laughs> but, but, you know, within that, there's a mid-ground that we can... Of course.
course. Work around. I mean, I know yeah. friends that they never get flowers from their husband. They never get like a card or something special, you know, on their birthday or even Christmas. I know couples that don't even exchange gifts ever. And it's so, so sad because those things are meaningful for women and even for men, you know, to feel special on their day or whatever. It's like, you know, get the kids to give a little card to their to their parents. And our marriage has never been perfect like anybody's marriage. We What have, are you talking about? We have, our, you know, nuestro problema no. and, 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 you know, it's been heavy duty and, you know, we've gone through a lot. And, yeah. and that's why we try to share with you guys what we have learned in this lifetime. Absolutely. So you guys... Try at least not to make the the mistakes that some people make, you know, through that journey of marriage, which is very difficult. And there's been uh, different levels of acceptance and tolerance with different things that we have compromised each other to be able to put up with it because it is very difficult. And I know you guys probably are in same kind of situations where it's very, very tough. At the end of the day, I can honestly tell you, cada relación que yo he tenido con cualquier persona que yo he tenido en el transcurso de mi vida, in my entire life, everything that I have done has always been from the bottom of my heart. And I think that if that's what you have done or you continue to do, that's the best approach you can have when you deal with any kind of Yeah, just being genuine. Being genuine with your feelings, absolutely. Yeah. I, I believe in that wholeheartedly. If you guys have any situations that you guys are going through either in a relationship or whatever the case may be you can comment below and let us know and maybe we'll talk about it in the next <laughs> podcast and we can give you our advice just from our standpoint that'll be great Así que hasta aquí llegó la fiesta. Make sure that you guys like this podcast for us. It means the world to us. Subscribe to our channel. And if you'd like to share any of your experiences or just let us know how we're doing and what you think of the podcast, please comment below and let us know. I have received some texts from uh, some of you letting us know how much you guys are enjoying it and that you guys laugh with all of our craziness. So we appreciate it from the bottom of our heart. We are really enjoying it. And like I said before, we were so bummed out that we couldn't post last week but hopefully those technical difficulties are behind us and we look forward to seeing you guys again so hope you guys have a great rest of your week thank you for being here with us portense bien portense bien we love you guys <laughs> <laughs>